that was one area that people lost points. On the first problem, people lost points because they squared the wrong value of R in one of the problems, or didn't square it right in the calculator, so the number came up off. And then the last four problems, I graded primarily only on methodology. I didn't necessarily worry about, did you come up with the exact right answer? As long as you were approaching the problem correctly, you got full credit. So that kind of, so you guys did really well on it. It's, it's, that stuff isn't really hard, it's just kind of time consuming. And so I was really, like I said, I was really pleased. So you, you guys will get, and it, it uh, turned out it was going to be worth 60 points, so that, that exam will show up as 60 points. So, so we're actually doing really good. Now I gotta find my notes for today. As per usual. Here we go. Because basically what I wanna do today is just a bunch of sample problems. Because we haven't done any sample problems on this stuff yet. So that should get us get us some get us going here. Alright. So you guys see the document camera over there in uh, Tonkawa? Thumbs up if you see the document camera. Okay, that's why I ask. I'm doing much better these days. How about now? All right, cool, 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 cool. Okay, so here we go. So what is the resistance of a 60 watt light bulb connected to a 120 volt AC circuit? So we want to look at power. We've seen power is equal to I squared R. And in this case, this is the RMS value for our voltage. And so we're going to look at this from a RMS value point of view. So this is going to be I squared RMS. And I RMS, which is our root mean squared, is equal to the voltage RMS divided by the square root of two. And I'm sorry, that's not the RMS value, that's the max value. I've got some problems where I have the RMS value and some problems where I have the max value. But this is the maximum value that you would get. Oh. VRMS over two R. Because remember, V is equal to IR, and my RMS value is the, the, uh, oh, no, this is max. That's max value, sorry. I'm going, something's not right. Because my max value is divided by square root of 2 gives me my, there we go. So we've got all of that straight now. P is equal to my V divided by the square root of 2 squared R, because we're putting that back in here. And that's over R, so I'm going to start it that way. Now I get B squared over 2R squared R. And now I get B squared over 2R is equal to P. And I'm going to solve for R. So when I solve for R, R becomes B squared over 2P. And now I can plug in the values. I get 120 squared 
divide it by 2 times 60, and that's going to give me 120 ohms. So these work very similar to the previous problems that we've been doing, except now we have to worry about RMS versus max values versus everything else. So now I'm going to give us a circuit. So I'm going to use an AC circuit. I'm going to give ourselves a resistor and a resistor. But this time we're not going to give us as a resistor values, we're giving them as wattage values, like a light bulb. So this would be like a 40 watt light bulb in the circuit, and this would be like a 60 watt light bulb in the circuit. And we want to find the current. I max and I RMS. And we're going to say that our voltage here is an RMS voltage is equal to 120 volts. <coughs> so V max is equal to the square root of 2 V RMS. So when I do my max current, that's just going to be the power divided by the voltage. When I do the RMS values, that's going to be the power divided by the voltage RMS. And when I do that, I can do it for the 40 watt bulb. 40 watt bulb is the power over 120 amps or 120 volts. So this is volts, this is watts. And that's going to give me 0.333 amps. If I do it for the other one, that's going to be my 60 watts divided by my 120 volts. And that's going to give me my 0.5 amps. And then you do the exact same thing for the max, except you have to figure out what the max power is. And if I do that, that square root of 2 is 1.14 something times my 120. And then I would just plug that into the system to find my max current. So those, and if you've been working the homework or started on the homework, some of these problems look real familiar. <laughs> They're not too dissimilar from the problems that you're going to get on your homework. All right, so now let's start looking at some of the other things that we've talked about. So we want to calculate the capacitive reactants and the RMS current for a system and the system that we've got is a straight capacitance system. So I've got a capacitor, I have an AC source. We're told that my AC source is 120 volts RMS at a frequency of 60 hertz. And this is 8 microfarads. And we want to calculate the capacitive reactants. So my capacitive reactants that we kind of showed early on this last week is 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance. 
and that ends up being in ohms as my units. So I want to show you the units here that we've got going. So a farad, if you go back and remember what a farad is, a farad is the capacity, is the charge per volt. Ohms, I could write it as volt amps, which is equal to volts coulombs per second, which gives me volts seconds coulombs. So if you haven't kind of looked at that in a while, that's exactly what our units are. So if I do the unit analysis for this, the units for this are going to be 1 over 1 over seconds times my capacitance, which is in farads, which is in volt or coulomb, set or coulomb volts, which gives me 1 over coulomb volt seconds, which is now going to give me volt seconds coulombs, which is an ohm. So just walking through the unit analysis to show that this ends up being just like my resistance, which it didn't show in the PowerPoints that we were doing. I didn't, I didn't show that before. So that gives you the, this unit. So now I can just plug and check the numbers. I get 1 over 2 pi. My frequency is 60 hertz. My um, capacitance is 8 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, because I was in microfarads. And that gives me 3, 3, 2 ohms. So that's why we say that these are like resistors in the circuit. Because when I do my capacit or that, that, that capacitive reactance, that gives me that particular piece. When I want to find the current, the current RMS current is going to equal the voltage RMS divided by my reactive capacitance. And that gives me my 120 divided by my 332, which is going to give me 0 0.3. 36 amps. So we can find the current in that circuit. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to do it for a circuit with a rich inductor. So what we're going to find is the inductive reactance and the, arm, and the current RMS. And we're going to use a system that looks like this. So I've got my inductor here. I've got an AC circuit. This is 120 volts RMS, and it's 60 hertz for my frequency. And we're going to use 25 millihenries. XL is equal to 2 pi times the frequency times my inductance. And then we'll also have IRMS is going to equal VRMS divided by our XL. But I'm going to go through the units just, so, cause just to show you the units work out. A Henry is a volt second amp, which is equal to a volt second coulomb per second, which becomes volts second squared coulombs. And if I do frequency times a Henry, I end up with 1 over seconds, volt second squared coulombs, gives me a volt second coulomb, which is equal to an ohm. Going right back here where we did our ohms earlier, showing you that's a volt second coulomb, volt second coulomb, and I get my ohms.
So now I just do the plug and chug. I get 2 pi 60 times my 25 times 10 to the minus 3. And when I do that number, I get 9.4 ohms. I get 120 over my RMS, 9.4, which is going to give me 12.8 amps. So that's when I get my, just my inductive circuit. I can go through that calculation. But the whole point of this is to do a full circuit, a circuit that's got everything in it. So let's take our circuit, let's do a full circuit. So the circuit that I'm going to start with is I'm going to put in an AC circuit. We're going to have a capacitor. We're going to have a resistor. And we're going to have an inductor. This is going to be 4 microfarads. This is going to be 25 ohms. This is going to be 0.5 henrys. We're going to do a 120 VRMS and we're doing 60 hertz with a frequency. So we're going to want to calculate the inductive resistance, the capacitive reactance, and the, and the inductive reactance, the capacitive reactance. We want to calculate the overall impedance Z. That's my overall impedance. We want to calculate the phase angle, and we want to calculate the max voltages across, oops, I can't spell across today, across each element. So that's what we want to calculate. So we've got lots of information to calculate. So X of L is one or is two pi frequency times my L. So it's two pi times 60 times 0.5. And that's going to give me 188.5 ohms. My capacitance reactance is 1 over 2 pi frequency times capacity, or capacitance, 2 pi times 60 times 4 times 10 to the minus 6, and that's going to give me 663.1 ohms. My inductance, or the impedance, is Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XL squared minus, oh, I'm sorry, XL minus XC squared. And what I didn't show you earlier in the week is we had to figure out that these were actually in ohms because I can't add, I have to be able to add ohms to ohms. I can't just, I can't add ohms and capacitance. I can't add ohms and Henry's. Like things have to be added together. Just like in algebra, right? If I have a factor in front of all the X's, I have to have all my X's together. I have to have all my X squares together. I can't just add the other things out there. So now I'm going to plug in my numbers. I get 25 squared plus 188.5 minus 663.1 squared. And when I plug all that in the calculator, it gives you a big number under here. It looks like something like this, 225870, which works out to be 475 ohms. I also wanted to find max 
current. I just didn't write that one down. So we'll find max current. So max current is going to equal voltage max divided by Z. But my voltage max is equal to the square root of 2 VRMS. And that's the square root of 2 times 120, which gives me 170 volts. So now I put in I max is equal to 170 divided by 475 and that gives me 0.36 amps. My phase angle, the tangent of the phase angle is equal to XL minus XC divided by R. My XL was 88.5 minus my 663.1 divided by 25 gives me a negative 18.98. Take the arc tangent and that gives me a phase angle of a negative 87 degrees. And the negatives and positives in this case kind of refer to whether I'm lagging or leading. Okay, so when we talked about one is a lag, one is a lead, this is going to give you that whether or not this current circuit lags or leads. So now I can do voltage max for capacitance. I can do voltage max for resistance for the resistor, and I can do voltage max for the inductor, and this is I max XC, this is I max R, and this is I max XL. Plug in my numbers 0.36 times 663.1 is going to give me 239 volts. My 0.36 times my 25 is going to give me 9 volts and my 0.36 times my 188.5 is going to give me 67.9 volts. So you do a practical application of one, and this relates back to our AC generators. So I'm going to use an AC generator, and its change in voltage is going to be given by 220 volts times the sine of 20 pi t. We want to find the max voltage. So I want to find max voltage, and I can do that by inspection because that's what this is. This is our voltage max. So that's going to be 220 volts. My frequency, I can do it by inspection because remember, this is 2 pi times the frequency. So the 20, so for frequency, it's got to be 20 pi divided by 2 pi, which is going to give me 10. So my frequency is going to be 10 hertz. My RMS 
value is just going to be my voltage max divided by the square root of 2, which gives me my 220 divided by the square root of 2, which gives me 156 volts. My RMS, this generator is connected to a 25 ohm resistor. Uh, squeal on the speakers. That's weird. Because I hear it on your end, but that's not, I'm not hearing anything in here. Is that better? I can hear it on their end, but I don't hear it in here at all. No. Okay, it seems to be better over there. Okay, so do the IRMS. We get V is equal to IR, so then we just get V divided by R, and that gives us the 156 divided by the 25. It gives us 6.24. To do max, we just, instead of putting the RMS value in, we put the max value in, and that's gonna give us our 220 divided by our 25, and that gives me 8.8. .8. And then power, if I want to power, I've got to do the I squared R. And if I'm doing power average, I use the I RMS value. And that puts in my one or my 6.24 squared times the 25. And that's going to give me 973 watts. move to electromagnetic waves. The classic, how long does it take the light from, we're going to do Alpha Centauri, or Alpha Centauri to reach Earth. Okay, a uh, couple of things for you guys. All the stuff that I just did, all that stuff, it's not going to show up on the final. All of that, uh, AC generators, AC circuits, won't start, start uh, show up on the final. However, starting here with electromagnetic waves, that stuff may be on the final. So I'm telling you that because you're likely to have to calculate how long it takes something to get to from somewhere, light to get from one point to another. So the stuff that we're doing from here on out is what's going to end up on the final. So how long does it take light to get from Alpha Centauri? First of all, we've got to know how far away Alpha Centauri is. And it turns out Alpha Centauri, if you go look it up, is about 40 trillion kilometers away from Earth. And since my speed of light, we know what my speed of light is, it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So I'm just going to do, if I do, um, remember that distance is equal to the velocity times time, which is going to equal the speed times time. 
So if I'm looking for my time, my time is just going to be the distance divided by the speed of light. But I got to convert my trillion into, um, into meters, so we're going to do that. So my distance divided by, so I got 1 over 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. I've got 40 times 10 to the 12 kilometers. That's what a trillion is. And then I have 1,000 meters to a kilometer. When I plug all that into the calculator, I get 1.33 times 10 to the 8 seconds. But this is why we don't do atomic or astronomic, astronomic distances in seconds because those are big numbers. So I got to convert that. So I'm going to do 365 days. There's 24 hours per day. There are 60 minutes in an hour. And there are 60 seconds in a minute which gives me 3.15 times 10 to the 7th seconds per year. So if I do that, I take my 1.33 times 10 to the 8 seconds divided by 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds per year, and that gives me 4.2 years and that's where we get the term light year, which is why we do things in light years. So when you look at the sky at night, you are looking at the past because it took that long for light to get, get to us. So you really are looking at the past. of light as being 1,400 Webers per meter squared. We want to find the radiation pressure of the light. But we want to find the radiation pressure of the light. So what this happens is if we get the intensity, and we kind of kind of went through it really quick on Wednesday, but the intensity is going to be related to the energy. So the energy total that we're given is 1,400 watts per meter squared. And just to kind of walk through this, we're going to get the 1,400 joules per second per meter squared, which gives us 1,400 newton meter seconds. So the pressure reflected is going to be 2 times the U divided by the speed of light. And this ends up being 2 times 0.12 U total divided by the speed of light. And when I plug that into the calculator, I get 1.21 times 10 to the minus 6 pascals. And this is the pressure reflected. I've also got to figure out the pressure absorbed. And that's 2, no, that's not 2, that's just U, C, and that comes in to 0.12 U total divided by C. 
And when I plug that one into the calculator, I get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 7. Pascals. And the total pressure is going to equal the reflected plus the absorbed. And when I do that, I end up with 1.68 times 10 to the minus 6. And there will not be one of these type of problems on the final. You know, I have this for the homework. Do another one associated with intensity of light. So we're still going to use the 1400 Weber's per meter squared for intensity. That's my I, that's my intensity of light. And we want to determine the magnitudes of. E max and B max for that intensity. So we just want to determine the magnet, the, the maximum electric field that we're going to get, and we want to determine the maximum magnetic field we're going to get. So intensity, and we kind of showed this on Wednesday, the intensity is equal to E squared 2 permittivity of light C and it's equal to C B squared to mu. So if I solve for E squared, E squared is equal to two permittivity of light, the speed of light times the intensity. And when I do this, I get two four pi times 10 to the minus seven times 3 times 10 to the 8 times my 1400. That gives me 1.06 times 10 to the 6. So E works out to be 1.03 times 10 to the 3rd volt meters. Do the same thing for b squared. b squared is now going to equal 2 mu i divided by the speed of light. I get 2 times 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8, 1400. And it gives me the magnetic field is 1, or magnetic field squared is 1.77 times 10 to the minus 11. B works out to be 3.42 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. And a problem that's likely to be a gimme for the final, so you've got two gimmies for the final already. But here's another one. We're given a helium neon laser as a wavelength of 643 nanometers. Determine the frequency. C is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. The wavelength or the frequency, frequency is equal to speed of light divided by the wavelength. I get three times ten to the eight meters per second divided by six hundred and forty-three times ten to the minus nine meters is equal to four point six times ten to the fourteen hertz. So you can either get the frequency or you could ask to get the wavelength. C 
So hopefully that helped. I think I've done just about every type of problem that you had on the homework. And then I think I got the homework set up for Monday, didn't I? Did I shift it to Monday? You guys okay over there in Takawa? All right. We'll see you all Monday.